Sarah Badwi here from Horse Racing Nation with another week of the Outrun the Odds video segment where I take a look at horses that I think have a chance to hit the board or possibly win at a price based on their morning line odds. And if you watched last week's episode, we did have our first winner in Senor Buscador in the ACAC Stakes at Churchill Downs. Another horse that I talked about was Courageous Ola, who ran a second at Belmont at the Big A at 7-1, to one, even with the race coming off the turf. And unfortunately, the third horse that I talked about ended up scratching out of a race that was run on the turf there so no uh nothing that i can hold against fauci but hopefully we'll go better this week with the three horses that i want to talk about and you can make sure not to miss future episodes by liking this video subscribing to the horse racing nation youtube channel and turning notifications on as well for all of the other content that we have coming up prior to the Breeders' Cup, because even this week alone, there is plenty to watch and learn about for those Breeders' Cup prep races. We do have a video for all the grade ones happening at Keeneland today and tomorrow. That's with my colleague, Ed DeRosa. I have analysis of two Breeders' Cup prep races happening in New York with the Naira Analyst and Paddock Host for Fox Sports, Maggie Wolfendale. And then we do have plenty of future content coming up for the Breeders' Cup as well, including an early look at the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's also with my colleague, Ed DeRosa. So this week, we're going to take a look at two different tracks, one of those being Keeneland, and that's where we'll start with the new morning line maker making a horse that I like a little bit, a crazy price at 50 to one on the morning line. And that's going to be in Saturday's grade one Claiborne Breeders Futurity, a win and you're in for that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's not my top pick at all, but we have to at least acknowledge that the number four confidence game maybe should not be the longest shot in the field. This is a horse that I have already talked about going into the grade three Iroquois stakes, and he did technically, technically outrun the odds that day to finish ahead of both favorites in that spot, being Damon's Mound and Echo again. He was a big price that day where he finished fifth. And looking at that race, he was the number eight horse. That was his first attempt going a route of ground. The figure I know is just not fast enough to compete with others in here. But he was always wide, and in the stretch, you can see that he's chasing a pace that does develop between Damon's Mound and Echo again. He gets himself up into third at one point, and then he just does some green baby stuff. He smacks into another horse. He kind of wanders around. There's other horses that go on with it, one of which he'll be facing again in here in the number three, Honed. But... I just don't know that we've seen everything that he's capable of. If we go back to his debut, he didn't break well in there. And that may have honestly been a good thing for him as he got an education out of that race. And I'm just not completely convinced that he's not better than what we saw in the Iroquois. I'm willing to find out at 50 to 1 on the morning line to see if he can get a piece of it in that British fraternity. Now staying at Keeneland for the grade one Coolmore Turf Mile. I'm a little surprised at the morning line price on the number five Mason for trainer Chad Brown and jockey Flavian Pratt. This horse has done nothing but hit the board in nine out of 10 career starts, and he is 100% in the money in the U.S. so far this year. If we go back to his U.S. debut, he got his uh, highest buyer speed figure, a 104 buyer, for his second place effort behind Cheryl Spite in the grade one makers mark mile here at Keeneland in the spring. He was the number four horse in there in red, just like everybody else. And what I like about him is his running style for this race. He has tactical speed. He can make his own trip. And I think that he may have to, and that will play to his advantage because there is some speed in this race. And there's also familiar foes that he's faced before, like Smooth Like Straight, Set Piece, and also a Tone who's lurking on the also eligible list. I know that he couldn't get to Casa Creed and Regal Glory in the four-star Dave. He was also the number four horse in there. But does that third place finish with his pace advantage really make him 12 to 1 over horses like some of these that he's already defeated before? He's done nothing but run consistent races. He has three triple digit buyers. And I just don't know that Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt, and Judmont are really going to be 12 to 1 at Keeneland on the turf. If they are, Mason is definitely the play in this spot. We'll switch to Belmont at the Big A for the third horse that I want to talk about in Sunday's Grade 2 Bell Dame, where the number one nest is 1-5, to five, and deservedly so, as she faces Olders for the first time. I'm interested in the number five horse, Travel Column, who is 6-1 to one morning line, and yes, I know, 6-1 to one is not a big price, but when you have a horse that's 1-5, to five, 
And another horse who is the second choice, that being first act at four to one in a five horse field, a third choice can pay a lot better than you would expect, especially when paired in a straight exacta with Nest, which is how I'm going to approach wagering on this race. Now, as a three-year-old travel column beat Clarier in the grade two fairgrounds Oaks and then ran in the grade one Kentucky Oaks, as well as the grade one Acorn. She was then off for over a year and has run two times at seven furlongs since returning as a four-year-old, winning an allowance race at Churchill Downs in very visually impressive fashion. And then she was one of three contenders for trainer Bill Mott in the grade one ballerina. Now Mott did finish second, third, and fourth in that race. And apparently travel column was the rabbit for the other two because she went out there, set blazing fractions, tossed Bella Sophia to the curb before being passed by Goodnight Olive, the eventual winner, and her stable mates as well. Is this now her time with her stretching back out to a route of ground? I think that possibly she could run a lot better than what we've already seen from her this year. I think that the stretch out and distance will suit her as that is where she did kind of her best running as a three-year-old. And I think that she's also just improved from three to four. And we'll see what she's made of when facing a horse like Nest as well as first to act with the other two probably just looking to pick up a piece in a race with a short field as black type looks the same, whether you're third in a four horse field or whether you're third in a 12 horse field. So the three horses that I like to outrun the odds this week are the number four confidence game in the Breeders' Futurity, the number five Mason in the Coolmore Turf Mile, and the number five travel column in the Beldame. Thanks for tuning in and good luck this weekend.